thanks for joining the Welcome to Consciousness podcast where we are raising consciousness together. We'll be discussing all things consciousness, awakening, healing, purpose, and so much more. If you haven't already, you can hit subscribe or like, or you can follow us along on Instagram or check out our website. Let's get started. You may have noticed that we've got a new intro and outro audio track. This track was composed by our next guest, Nathan Karki, also known as SP6 Creative. We are going to dive straight into this episode. He's got some amazing things to share with us all. Well, good day there, and thanks for tuning in to Welcome to Consciousness. I'm here with my friend, Nathan Karki, and I just want to give you a bit of background about him. Before I do, we're actually in a hotel room because we're spending the day in Melbourne with a day with Joe Dispenza tomorrow, which we're both really looking forward to. And I might share a bit more about that, but Joe's been really significant in my journey. And um, yeah, he's a real inspiration. So Nathan, first of all, thanks for joining us. Uh, Thanks for uh, having me on the couch today, Michael. On the uh, hotel episode of the podcast. (laughs) So Nathan's from Minds on Purpose, and he's a mindset coach, and he's an artist as well. Now, formerly he spent 17 years uh, in a career in the corporate world uh, in banking and finance. He also lives in Shepparton, which is here in Australia. He's married with three teenage kids. He's the assistant football coach of his son's football team in a local football team, which I love that. Um, He's a mentor in the Bendigo Creative Industries, and he's really involved in the community and in the art community as well which is really cool. And we first met at my second uh, Reiki session um, with Neil at Culture Tree. Mm. When I arrived there, you were leaving and we had a chat. And I remember thinking, I didn't know people like this existed in Shepparton and I hope we meet again, (laughs) but I didn't have your number. And I actually wondered if we ever would meet again. And uh, here we are, we've developed a friendship and yeah, we're talking about some exciting things that we may end up doing together in the space of consciousness and business. And so, yeah, once again, thanks for being here. And how about you tell us a bit more about yeah, your background and how you came to experience consciousness on your own journey because you had quite a cool experience. Yeah, yeah, no, thanks, Michael. Um, I, uh, it's interesting that you brought up that the meeting or chance meeting uh, in, in Culture Tree. Um, and it's probably a good spot to, to kick off. Uh, so at that time, um, I'd had 17 years in, in corporate banking and um, I'd hit a bit of a brick wall. And so um, I'd had several um, health issues, so physical yeah. health issues, um, that culminated in me hitting a little bit of a brick wall from a mental perspective. And um, when I met you in Culture Tree, I was actually doing my Reiki 1 and 2. So something that was very, very different to me at that point in time after 17 years in banking and finance. But um, and I needed, uh, at, yeah. at that point, would you say like you'd had a burnout experience or you were just hitting some brick walls internally? Yeah, I think it's um, uh, what made sense to me at the time is I'd had, um, you know, I could talk physically at that time because mm. um, that made sense to me rather than spiritually. And, so for me, I'd had a, um, a seizure, which left me in hospital for 10 days. Mm. Um, I'd had a squamous cell cancer taken off my lip, and then I'd had a third of my liver taken out. I'd had that in an 18-month window. Mm. Um, and then um, the culmination of that was, was something different. One of the uh, ladies I'd worked with uh, for quite a long time, um, we had to tell the team she was off working definitely with cancer, and that was my breaking mm. moment so it, it took something very different to myself um, to be my breaking moment um, so you know off to the doctor and understood a lot about my stress and anxiety levels that I've been carrying for a long period of time mm. um, throughout my corporate world um, and uh, learned a little bit more around how that had caught up with me from a physical perspective mm. um, and then um, took some time off so I took six months off and uh, it was in that six months that I started my Reiki journey mm. um, and then uh, you know, continued that, which was great, and um, started some artwork as well in that period of time, and uh, which I still do today. 
Yeah. yeah. So that was a fairly significant, you know, transition time. Yeah, it was a... Um, I wouldn't say it was a planned transition time. Yeah. It, was a, <laughs> it was a thrown in transition time, but it was one that I needed. And it was... Um, I look back now and it was great for me. And um, I guess you could say, um, you know, f- for me it was... A brick, I'd called it a brick wall. Um, you know, Neil, who's, you know... Both of our Reiki shaman, I guess you could call him. Um, you know, Neil would say that was my Kundalini. Mm. That was that was my moment, which of is awakening, like an awakening, yeah. like an awakening, mm. yeah. Um, and certainly, um, you know, if I look back to the start of that with my ten days in hospital with the seizure, mm. um, you know, certainly, certainly a, a Kundalini type experience. So. so, from that perspective, like, what would you say energetically was going on? Like, was there just a whole shift in you through that seizure experience that then there was a big adjustment that needed to be made energetically but then integrated into... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And and with the mindset work that I do at the moment, um, you know, quite often uh, I will use the line that you can only live and work out of values alignment for so long Yeah. Uh, before it hits a, uh, you know, that brick wall or... Or something happens, and if I look back now, uh, my values misalignment mm. had been there for some time, and I kept ignoring it. Mm. Um, and if you want to put it in energetic terms, the universe kept giving me hints and hints and hints <laughs> to wake up. Yeah. Um, and yeah, my body kept giving me hints to wake up. Um, yeah. My mind kept giving me hints to wake up, and and I didn't. I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, and so for me now, I'm really passionate about helping people understand their own signs around mm. when they need to make change. And I truly believe that people can make change without hitting that brick wall. Mm. Um, okay. Most people tend to hit the brick wall first because we yeah. generally don't make change unless we're forced to. Um, but I absolutely believe that people can avoid that yeah. and make change earlier. Mm. Yeah, I've heard you can evolve through awareness yep. or through suffering. Yeah, exactly. Most of us wait for the suffering. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> and we tend to need to have the motivation to make the uncomfortable changes and lifestyle changes yeah. and jump into the unknown. Like you've gone from the world of corporate yep. into being an artist and being a coach where you work for yourself. And that's completely different um, type of living and working and everything. Yeah. It, it is. Um it's crazy though the similarities of, um, and, and it's taken me a little while to say similarities because when I um, first made my change, I didn't want to have anything at all to do with the corporate world. I, yeah. and, you know, I guess you could say, uh, or fair to say, I was completely burnt out yeah. from that and just needed some space and, and time. And so it was like a stress trigger in a sense. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. But when I look, yeah, you know, where I am now. Um, um, because of what I went through as 17 years in corporate, because I understand that world well, um, now as a coach, I find myself working with either business owners or business leaders or executives uh, because I understand their world mm. um, and because I can help them understand their own triggers mm. sooner. Um, and so for me, um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of uh, now helping those understand their journey sooner mm. so they don't have to, to get to where I did. Yeah. yeah. So at that point, was energy or consciousness or awakening, was that on your radar at all in any way? So even even after... Um, so after my six months of, of time off, um, even though I'd done some Reiki stuff for myself, um, energy work was nowhere near my radar. Um, so I was fortunate enough to, to go into um, business with a, a, a lovely business partner who had um, a business doing team workshops or what I knew of her business mm. in terms of doing team workshops and being a coach. Um, once I started to understand her business more, I realised that she actually did energy work. Mm. Um, and so even though she was in the... I knew her from that corporate world and teams world, which she's amazing in... Um, she was actually doing energy work, um, you know, as well and alongside the mm. work that she was doing. So um, for me, it was, even then, it was, that's 
awesome, um, but that's your thing. I'll do the business thing. So even though I'd step right away, when I come back in, I could see myself helping business people, um, but from a coaching perspective, not anything to do with business. Um, and so that transition into me doing energy work as part of my uh, mindset coaching mm -hmm. took a real evolution of, of time. Um, but yeah, certainly now, which is what you'd know me as. Yeah, um, yeah I, I do energy work as part of my mindset coaching. I do uh, work in businesses, helping them understand themselves more authentically, mm. uh, which comes down to all of those same concepts um, that, that from Chinese medicine, all the concepts around um, energy. Mm. Uh, when we're going inwards and we're finding out more about our values and beliefs, uh, more about the things that happen to us as we've gone along life, our life's journey um, that help form those values and beliefs that then run the, the I guess you can call the subconscious patterns of, of how we live. Mm. Um, you know, all of that, I guess, evolved over the last few years because um, just seeing, seeing people that my business partner coached and how she managed to dig deep quick, yeah. and, and that's the energy work. Yeah. Um, and then looking at my coaching techniques now versus what they used to, by employing some of those modalities, you can just dig so much deeper quicker yeah. uh, and get real change so much quicker. Mm. So one of the things that you've told me that you're really passionate about is the spiral yeah. healing process. Um, can you explain more about what that is and why you love that so much? Yeah. Um, uh, while I, I guess... My introduction to Spiral was my business partner, Anita, was a Spiral practitioner. Um, so it's a modality that um, first came into existence in 2014. Um, a guy named Dane Thomas created the modality. Um, and you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of practitioners now across the world uh, trained in the Spiral. But um, for me, Anita put me through the Spiral. Um, and so the Spiral uses um, the muscle testing technique from kinesiology to locate attachments to childhood emotions um, and or attachments to emotions. Yeah. And majority of our attachments, first, second and third attachments are during childhood, but, but some are in our later years as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, so Anita um, put me through the spiral, which was just an amazing process. And for me, it, it really helped me on my journey to, to just clear away some of my past and some of the things that had happened. And mm. um, it really also helped me step into being an artist. Mm. So for me, um, Spiral, uh, you know, before Spiral, I, I could never call myself an artist. It was so far out of my, my psyche. It just wasn't funny. Uh, you know, the, my world didn't match. Yeah. Um, and what I knew of myself just didn't match. Yeah. Um, so it really helped me clear that the way for me to say no I am an artist yeah um, but I also am an ex-banker mm. and I'm also a mindset coach mm. um, I'm also a poet and I write books yeah um, I can be all of those things and it really cleared the way for that but but spiral um, uses um, kinesiology to locate attachments from childhood emotion and so we we test for this first second and third attachments mm. to an emotion um, which then forms the subconscious pattern but that plays out in our life. And so when I test for those emotions and I give people the ages and emotions um, that they attached, majority of the time they will see how that pattern plays out in their life. Mm. Um, and then we go in um, and use you know, the tapping from Chinese medicine yeah. to energetically clear that pattern yeah. from their body. So they're making sense of the pattern um, both from a, a brain perspective or mentally Yep. making sense of that pattern because they see how it plays out in their life. Yep. Um, and a lot of the times they will know at least one, if not more, of the events that happened mm. as well. Um, yep. But they also then get to um, feel that energetically leave their body. So there's generally a visceral type response to them feeling that mm. leave their body. So it's working on so many levels. That's why I love yeah. love the spiral. It, it, it's um, you know, neuro-linguistic programming. NLP, it's um, kinesiology, it's um, scale of consciousness, Dr. David yep. Hawkins. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's, um, 
yeah, just an amazing, amazing process. So mm. uh, an example is your, um, just say you're, you're seven years old and you're in a restaurant. First time in that restaurant, you're experiencing smells and tastes, um, sights that you haven't seen before. And you're, you're just going, how good is life? And you're experiencing joy. Mm. Uh, and so you jump up and down in your chair and you just go, wow, this is amazing. Um, and someone walks past and says, sit down. Um, and all of a sudden you've just gone, um, and so you may have experienced shame. So you've been experiencing joy, but you've felt shame. Um, and now if the next couple of times in life you have a similar experience, chances are, as an adult, when you experience joy, you probably won't experience joy openly, but you won't understand why. Um, and so for me, the power in, in Spiral is uncovering those moments, getting people to go in into a meditation, go back and find where that is in their body. A lot of times it'll trigger those memories of those points, uh, making sense of that, being able to move forward and then energetically clearing it mm. so you can move forward. So yeah. Um, yeah, I love I love the Spiral, as you can, as you can see. And I've, um, yeah. the, the interesting part for me about Spiral, though, Michael, and you touched on it before around my journey into energy work. Mm. Um, you know, for me, uh, majority of my client base is either leaders in the corporate world or business owners mm. or executives. Um, and majority of my audience have never, ever um, done any energy work um, or even thought about doing energy work. Mm. Um, but as soon as they start to experience some of these, particularly the visceral experiences of feeling things leave their body, um, particularly when we do some of the emotional testing, uh, sorry, some of the um, kinesiology testing for ages and emotions, and they go, wow, how did, how did you guess that age? Because this happened. Uh, it's amazing how quickly people go, well, I need this. Yeah. yeah. And this is what can be done with, with energy work, with kinesiology. You can read someone's energy. Yeah. The energy field and you can learn so much about them. Correct. And it's kind of like a part of life that we, we haven't really been taught. Yeah. But like anyone can do that. Anyone can do it. And I think it's um, it's still that big block, right, between... I even find myself using different language. Yeah. So when I'm talking to... Um, so in the corporate world, what kind of language would you say when we're talking um, about... So I'll definitely talk about mindset coach. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so um, I'll talk about... Um, you know, finding those things that are holding them back. Mm. Being able to acknowledge those things that are holding them back, being able to let them go and being able to move forward. And then do you describe that I use kinesiology or do you say, oh, you have a, like an, an energy testing modality? Yeah. Or? <laughs> <laughs> but if, um, particularly if someone shows interest and they're keen to learn more, yeah, yeah absolutely, I'll talk about this is what I, this is what I do. Yeah. Uh, because I don't think there's any... any benefit in um, saying it differently than having someone sit down and go, what are we, we doing what? Um, but yeah, but I think in terms of um, just talking about the, mm. the modality, I, I use certainly the language is different um, because people are more comfortable to start with in understanding that what we're, what we're doing is helping them, you know, uh, get into that right mindset. Mm. It's to really unlock their growth mindset. Yeah. It's to find those barriers that will help them move forward. It's to be more authentic. Mm. Um, and authentic leadership is, you know, is a word that's used a lot. Um, Even in the corporate world? Very much in the corporate world, yeah. authentic leadership. But um, you know, I used to see so much training in regards to authentic leadership. But um, now you know, I look at what I do now and I look at what our business, Minds on Purpose, does with my business partner, Anita, um, when people understand themselves more, mm. when they actually really take the time to go down deep, understand their own values, understand their own beliefs, um, when they take the time to be really curious about um, how those beliefs and values are driving their life, mm. whether those beliefs and values are helping them get where they want to get to or pushing them away from where they want to get to, when they actually do that, they become more curious about others. Mm. And for me, that's real authentic leadership. Mm. Yeah. When, when you can be really curious about the people you work with, the people you're leading, um, when you can deep dive on yourself and understand from your own perspective 
what drives you, you are way more curious about others. Um, and so, you know, for me, that is authentic leadership. And then leads to more authentic connection, more authentic conversations. Yeah, more authentic relationships. And people pick that it, up. Exactly. Mm, which is so powerful. It is. We're taking a quick break because I want to let you know that I'm looking for some big dreamers who either feel disconnected from or stuck in their big dream to take all their power back, to thrive in every area of their life and create everything that they dream of. It doesn't matter how big the obstacles are or how impossible it seems. If you've got a big dream, whether it's for your business, your career, your health, your relationships, or to make a big impact in the world, or all of the above, I'm telling you, if you feel it somewhere inside, it's absolutely possible. The universe wouldn't put that inside of you if it wasn't, and I'd love to help you get there. If this resonates with you, please reach out through Instagram or my website. I'd love to meet you, hear about your dreams and your challenges, and see what's possible together. And now we'll return back to the show. Well, I loved hearing about your journey as an artist as well. So I just wanted to ask you about that because I feel like a lot of people with a gift as an artist or a passion as an artist um, tend to hide it and, and not always show it. Yeah. And, uh, but there's so much value in, in being able to shine your own gifts. So yeah, what's your journey with that been like? Yeah, so f- um, for me, my, my journey very much um, started out exactly like you just said. It was hidden. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my journey, uh, a silent poet six. Mm. Uh, so it was very much, very much that silent poet, <laughs> right? It was, um, yeah. for me, um, I'd always written poetry as a kid. Okay. Loved it. Um, always written a lot of song lyrics. I go back to my early childhood. I could certainly see myself singing in a band or writing my own, writing my own music. Mm. Um, but then, you know, life takes you on a journey, and, and um, quite often, if you enter some of those corporate worlds or business worlds, uh, you get swept in a in a journey towards career. Mm. Um, and for me, that's that's absolutely what happened. Yeah. Um, and so, focused really heavily on my on my career, um, mm. focused on the growth of that and understanding that and seeing how far I could go and mm. um, you know certainly poetry didn't I thought at the time mm. didn't have a place in that corporate world um, mm. uh, you know I look at it very differently now but that that was me so I just sort of shut that down and and went as hard as I could in, in the business world and had life become all about the career for you at that point yeah it was it was family but it was very much career as well yeah, yeah so for me it was um it was very much around career, and you just get, I guess, you get sucked into, into that as well. Um, yeah, it becomes a bit of a vortex of that becomes a priority, and then everything folds around that. And definitely, and where you put your time is what's going to propel that more than spot on. Yeah, yeah, and so more um, than connecting with yourself and your passion and yeah, having balance and yeah, that's it. And so yeah, so Silent Poet Six was born, which became a bit of an avenue. Yeah, um, to to start putting some poetry out there into the world. And um, so when I left, uh, when I left that corporate world, I, uh, in 2020, I released a poetry book. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, Words of Light to Awaken a Silent Soul. Um, but at that stage, I wasn't ready to promote, to promote it. For me, it was still very silent. So it was just something I did for myself. So did it, published it, and then just sort of sat it on the, sat it on the shelf, I guess you can say, hidden back in and, and let it get dusty for a little while. And it, it's only been um, in the last couple of months that I've actually launched that book because I was ready to to put myself out there as a as a poet, yeah. as an artist, um, as an author, as an author, exactly. Mm. Um, and, and so, tell us about the book, like that. Who will be drawn to this book? Yeah, so the book is in um, in a few different chapters, but um, you know, some of the chapter names are awake but not aware. Yeah, um, aware but not awake. Mm. Um, so there's a, a few different elements of the, of someone's journey, mm. um, you know, right through to being solely in their purpose, mm. um, and they're poems that are related to each sort of phase of where you're at. I guess you could say from an awakening yeah. perspective or your conscious journey. Mm. Um, 
And the way I, I wrote the book was to be used, I guess, as oracle, a bit of an oracle cards type setup where um, you open the book to a page and it gives you your message. Yeah, wow. For the day. And a lot yep. of the poems are, are deep and carry, carry some significant messages within them. And, um, yeah. And so, um, you know, certainly people that you know, I've had a fair bit of feedback from the book and, and that's how people love to use it as well. Mm. Um, so I've had some that you know, read it from front to back but then sit it beside their bed and then they'll get their message yeah, wow. per day mm. out of it. But um, yeah, no, look, I, it's something I'm really proud of and I can say I'm proud of it now and, and happy to have it out there. And Yeah, um, and in case we forget later, where's the best place to buy it? Yeah, so um, online, online via Dimmick's Books or Amazon yep. are the best two places. The Amazon Australia Marketplace. Yeah. Um, is the, the best one or um, certainly the most value if you're in Australia mm. um, the cheapest one but you know if you're overseas then it's, it's just on any Amazon platform yeah um, and I guess you'd ask about my art um, yep. and it's really there's a couple of things that led me into art so my daughter had, had said um, during that six months off she said dad can you do some artwork with me mm. I said no I'm terrible at art she said why are you terrible at art I said well my art teacher said I was terrible at art and uh, she said, just have a go. And so, you know, I sat down and had a go and she said, that's pretty cool. And I went, yeah, I'm actually <laughs> enjoying this. Um, but another thing that, that really pushed me on to keep doing it is I needed to be able to put some pictures in my book. And so I was just like, oh, who could I get to do pictures or could I take photography? And it was just it was sort of pushed myself to go, nah, let's, let's actually do my own artwork mm. for the book. And so push myself to do my own artwork for the book and, um, yeah, and, and that's led to you know, Silent Poet 6 to a shortening of SP6. Okay. Um, so SP6 is, is what I sign off on my art. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And I remember you saying once that art was kind of a, a way of meditating for you as well. Mm. Like, did you find then you found the real peace and flow in it? I did. Um, and, and still do. So it takes me to that. It takes me to that place. Um, for me, the... And my art's not traditional art, so I'll I'll sit down and I'll draw and I'll paint, but I generally don't do full paintings or full drawings. So I'll paint an element. It might be a flower, mm. or it might be a butterfly, um, or just the stem of a tree or some leaves, um, and then I upload them digitally, and I arrange my artwork digitally um, yeah. using all those different elements to create an artwork. And mm. um, I find that process just as meditative. As a sitting down and, and drawing, um, mm. and so everyone's brains work differently. But for me, being able to start with just a few elements of things, and then to be able to put them together in an artwork, mm. um, you know, that's oh, I love to be able to do that. To, that my creative process of just looking at how things could go together mm. on a on a page, and then creating it and going, wow, that's from those things. Mm. Um, for me, that's that's my creative process. Mm. So I wanted to ask, with, just with your journey, with all this energy work that you've done and your own awakening journey as well, like, for you, what have been the biggest challenges in, yeah, your life that you've experienced with that? Yeah, um, so apart from the illnesses side of things, which... Um, which was a rough awakening at the which, start. Which was a rough awakening at the start, so take, take that aside. Um, for me, one of the biggest challenges was um, uh, building large networks and strong networks mm. throughout my 17 years in corporate and, and in my agricultural career before that. Um, for me, being able to get my head around how I'd be accepted in those worlds, in the banking and finance and agribusiness worlds, whilst doing energy work. Mm. That was my biggest barrier. Um, mm. And so even to say, hey, I'm doing artwork or I'm doing poetry, that was a big enough barrier uh, that I thought at the time mm. to those networks. Um, so to be able to say, hey, no, part of my coaching is I do energy work, that was just so far out there, I couldn't see it. Um, and were you even a coach at that point? Or were you, did you always feel like you were a coach even when you stopped I in, think, in the corporate world? Um I've always been a coach. 
yeah. always. And so so you looked, still felt like you had that, yeah, that sense of identity there. Yeah. And even in my, you know, uh, even in my prior roles, I've always led people, mm. um, or mentored people, or both. Yeah. Um, and so for for a lot of years now, I've always mentored people within the business I've been in, or ex- and external, yeah, as well. So I've always been a coach, um, right back to. Uh, for as long as I can remember, people have always come to me <laughs> yeah. for, for, I guess you could call it coaching. I certainly didn't call it that as a kid, but... Yeah, you can have lots of different titles. Yeah, yeah um, but I've always been someone that people have come and, mm. and downloaded to. Um, so you're worried about maybe how people might take that or perceive it, but what has been the experience? Then? Yeah, I, I guess that was an acknowledgement of um, it was... Because I was energetically open, uh, that people would come and yeah. download. It was that empath yeah. side of me that people felt comfortable to come and download and to, to talk and to. Mm. Um, and so, um, I guess the s- starting to realise that some of these things were incredibly beneficial, mm. um, and are beneficial for me, but beneficial for the people I coached, um, and so. I, you know, after a while, got comfortable with the fact that, no, this is what I do. Mm. Um, and for me now, it's very much, you know, I talk openly to my networks mm. um, about the fact that I do do energy work as part of what I do. Um, and it might not be that common still, okay. um, but hopefully in time it does become really common because it works. Um, and, you know, Courses for courses, and those things aren't for everyone. But mm. um, certainly, those that um, that are ready for it, they, mm. they get huge, huge results out of it. So, um, I'd love to say that there was a silver bullet that this was the thing that helped me get over getting to those networks. Mm. Um, but if I look back, certainly Spiral played a big part mm. in it. But there was also um, time. There was also me going through my journey of being ready. Mm. Um, there was also starting to work with a few of those clients and those clients saying, why, why doesn't everyone do this? Mm. Yeah. Why don't you tell everyone about this? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> probably should. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, just like everyone, it takes, it takes time, right, to, to build confidence in yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah to totally. build confidence in what you do, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, and there hasn't always been a lot of openness to energy work. No. It's been judged in certain ways. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like you felt a bit of that pressure to sort of like it didn't fit into the corporate world. So, you know, it's very easy to feel like you're an outsider or not going to be accepted or whatever. But really what you're saying is that people are looking for this anyway. Like maybe not everyone's looking for it, but when you start to realise there's energy behind everything. Yeah, and there's energy behind all your emotions and all the experiences you've had and through your upbringing, but also in your relationships yep. behind money. Money is a type of energy. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, there's an energetic exchange in, in everything that you do. Mm. I mean, uh, and the, the physical world wouldn't exist without the energetic world correct. being there. Yeah, I, I um, and you're spot on with that. I think the... Um, uh, for me, there's this big perception around who's, who's into energy work, mm. or at least I thought there was <laughs> mm. this huge perception around who was into energy work and who wasn't into energy work. And, um, and sometimes, um, particularly in you know, early days for me, it was certainly, oh, you have to be sitting around in a circle meditating to be in it. Yeah. Um, and you know, I love to sit around in a circle and meditate now. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, but, but I mean, the reality of it is... You don't need to. Mm. Um, there's so many versions of who's ready for energy work. Mm. There's so many versions of um, who energy you know, energy work can be great for um, and help. Um, and so you know, I look at um, that what I do now. My my audience is uh, people that are already performing well. So you could um, put a line across, and the majority of them will say. There's nothing I really need to change. Um, and so their first sentence will be, uh, I don't feel I have to. 
change anything at the moment. Generally, they're going okay in a stable job. They generally feel like they've got their stuff together. Mm. Um, and they're generally reasonably high-performing yeah. because they've felt success in, in whatever they've done or they've experienced success before. Um, but for me, that audience, there's, um, and particularly my audience, there's an underlying part of where they sit with that. So they don't have to change. But when you start asking a few questions, they're not 100% happy. Mm. So there's that niggling, there's more um, feeling to them. Um, and whether that's in work, whether that's in their life, um, whether even that's just with their consciousness but they're not aware of it yet, mm. um, there's that niggling part of there's more. Mm. Um, and for me, that's my, that's my audience and that's where, where I come in is helping them uncover that more mm. part. Um, and generally it is um, very much conscious related and as they understand more about themselves, they understand more about where they want to go next and whether that's in life or whether that's in work, whether that's with their business. Um, it was really just connecting to their, what they truly want. Absolutely. Who they truly are. When they work out who they truly are and what they truly want, it flows into all those areas yeah. of their life. And um, so for me, that's, that's my audience. But if I look at energy work, um, you know, certainly our Reiki um, shaman, um, works with a different audience, yeah. Generally, not all the time, but works with a different audience mm. to that. And um, if I look at others that I know from a kinesiology perspective, they'll work with a different audience mm. again. Um, and so there's always crossover, right? But it's um, the thing with energy work. I think when people think about energy work, they may think of only one audience mm. because that's the audience they've had exposure to, or they know someone who does energy work with that audience mm. and so um, they, that will be their perception of what energy work is but you know when we're in it and we see such the, the breadth of people that energy work can help mm. at, at all different you know, levels of where at within their life's journey or their conscious journey um, you know for me that's the exciting part yeah. about this when people start to learn more about it Mm. Um, start to and learn more about themselves and accept it mm. yeah. and become confident in it Absolutely. because I feel like a lot of people do do energy work because yeah. they are relating to energy and everything they're doing yep. and even the concept of intuition is more broadly accepted now yeah. I mean have you found that in the banking world would that be a accepted thing or not really well, to, to tune into your intuition yeah I think your gut um, feeling it's always the gut feel, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that still exists. Like, so that we're talking about energy there. Yeah. We're not talking about your analytical mind. No. Which we're often living most of our life out of. Yeah. And that's it. That's where the worries come from and the fears and where we, we spend a lot of our time. Yeah. But actually, there's all this other knowing and information coming in to anyone. There is. And even when we look at sports, we talk about like team spirit. You know, like that when you have a really strong team spirit, it's like they're they're all connected to this this energy feel with each other. Yeah, it's like they don't have to talk to communicate. It's um it's a funny one. We um in our team workshops, um, well, uh, one of the little exercises we do, particularly with um with the business world or corporate world, um, got a little little buzzer, um, that lights up when the two points are connected. So basically, if you're pushing one point of a, a, you know, both down on the battery, they both, but you know, if it was a battery, both turn on and, and make the mm. make the little light go on and the, and the buzzer go off. Mm. Um, what we'll do is we'll actually get people to become that conductor. And so if you were to grab it and put two fingers on the conductor, it'll light up. Um, if you and I were to hold hands and put a finger each on it, it would light up. And so we get people to stand around in a circle, teams holding their hands, light a finger on it, one each side, and it'll it'll light up, right? So it's using your body as that energy circuit mm. um, to complete that circuit all the way around. Mm. Now, if you break that circuit at any point, the light doesn't go on. 
mm. the buzzer won't go off. You're actually breaking that electrical circuit no matter where you are. And we've done it with you know 30 people in a circle all holding hands and then touching the one person touching the buzzer each side and completing that circle will go off and anyone in that circle breaks that circuit and it goes off. And it's an awesome little demonstration of the energy at work. Mm. You know, we are all energy. Mm. Um, and we feel energy and we pass on energy and we take on energy. Um, and it's a great little int- introduction to people. People freak out. It's like, hang on, I'm holding their hand. I've just passed their depth. <laughs> um, and so we always a bit of a you know, disclaimer at the start. So if you're uncomfortable, just Good move away. Yeah. You know. But I mean, um, it's a really good point around what you're saying around you know, and the practical en- energy, the practical of- elements of energy. And and then do you apply it into different things, communication and teamwork and definitely yeah, like then you're like you know when the the energy's not flowing between the team yeah, then the team energy's not there. It, it's not there. Um, mm. And so when you start to introduce some of these concepts, people get it because mm. they feel it. Yeah. Um, and it's it's not about um, yeah. You know, although a lot of people love to make sense of things mentally. But when you actually get them out of their brains for a minute and into their body mm. and allow them to experience it and feel mm. what's going on yeah. and then make sense of it, yeah, it's so much different. Yeah. yeah. And feeling is such a big part of this journey, isn't it? It's that feeling the energy and and feeling what it's like to connect with your authentic self. And Yeah. I mean, because everyone wants that. That's right. To feel that connection to themselves, to others, to life. And so when people start to experience that more, I mean, there's nothing sort of weird about it, really. It's just really living real life. Yeah, I think that um, that's that's how I'd say now. Um, some of these concepts were so far removed from, from where I was in my own mindset or yeah. my own exposure to different things. and um, So they were scary. And they didn't make sense. Um, But the more you learn about any of these things, it's not scary. Um, And it's not weird. It's actually just helping us understand ourselves more. Mm. It's connecting to ourselves more. Mm. Um, And certainly when we connect to ourselves more, um, particularly in the form of meditation, um, particularly when we start down that path of, of... taking time out of our brain, slowing it down, slowing it down, being aware of the thoughts, being aware of the thoughts. Exactly. Um, and you know, certainly our, our, you know, that whole pattern plays out, you know, you know our thoughts influence mm. everything. Mm. Um, and so when we're conscious of our thoughts and we can change our thoughts, um, it has a big influence. And, yeah. but it's amazing to, um, certainly for me, that when you slow down and really embody this stuff, it's amazing what, I guess you could call it drops in, um, and anyone from the spiritual bent will understand what that what that means. Um, but it's amazing what drops in, mm-hmm. what knowledge drops in, what past memories drop in, what drops in that you need to know at that particular time. Yeah, um, and you don't have to be down a, a deep spiritual path for that to happen. Have you experienced no. that? Anyone can access that information they certainly can and um i was working with a client who um spoke to me this week and said oh my god i'm manifesting stuff (laughs) said tell me what tell me what you mean um and you know relatively new term to him um but it was just like i've been thinking about this and i've been talking about doing this and this and all of a sudden this happened and then this happened and then this happened over here and yeah, and I couldn't believe it. You know, it was all all this stuff that I'd thought about and talked about, and it's all happening. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's that's um, for me when people get really, really clear around who they are, what they want, mm. um, who they want to be, yeah, what they want to have, um, and why is that? Well, you you start to attract, right? Your yeah. Thoughts. That is the energy. It's the energy. <laughs> you, you start to attract. Yeah. Um, and, and energy attracts life. Absolutely, it does. Absolutely, mm. it does. And so, um, you know, people that aren't as au fait or comfortable with the spiritual world, um, for me, the wording there is, is purely around when you get clear around what you want mm. in life, 
and you'll get clear around who you want to be, the type of person you want to be, mm. you automatically get clear around the things that you need to do in order to be that person or have those things. Mm. And when you get clear around the do, you start manifesting that. Yeah. And so you will start attracting those things that you need to do. Mm. You'll start um, finding new opportunities for yourself. Um, and you, know, you don't need to be spiritual to experience that. Mm. And, but you can certainly put it back into the form of consciousness really, really quickly. Yeah. Uh, because the universe um, does uh, conspire, I guess you can call it, energetically for those things to happen. Mm. Um, but I guess the point I'm trying to make is you don't need to experience the full awakening spiritual side of things mm. to be able to experience that universe conspiring to, to help you find those things that you want and i feel like it's a really important thing for us to keep in context us that are into the spiritual um, world or community and, and consciousness that knowing that it, that's not going to be the entry point for a lot of people into this connection to themselves and to the universe yeah and which is why i love joe Dispenza's work mm. because he comes from a more scientific medical point of view and, and he helps the analytical brain actually get past itself and experience the consciousness that we are. And actually, when I listened to his series, I didn't want anything to do with spirituality, uh, being burnt out of religion. Mm. And that's a big part of the challenge. So I, if, it, he, if he packaged it as that, I probably wouldn't have listened. <laughs> and then I started realizing, connecting the dots back to spirituality and yeah. realizing he's talking about the divine. He's talking about... God is talking about the universe and but I opened up to it because he was talking about energy yeah. consciousness the quantum field and illustrating it from that point of view yeah I think that's um, if I look back to some of our earlier conversations that's why we connected mm. so well um, because neither of us certainly didn't enter it from the point of we're fully spiritual mm. we entered it from a very different point of we're not. <laughs> um, well, I didn't want to be. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then I realised, actually, I am on a very deep spiritual path here. That's it. Whether I like it or not. Exactly. But again, it's terminology. Yeah. The word spirit is just a term for yeah. this energy we're talking about. It's just been a very common one. But unfortunately, it also creates a lot of conditioning for people too. So it can also be a block for many people. That's so we right. need to be prepared to, to have a broader maybe just acknowledgement that it is just terminology that points towards an experience. That's right. Um, and, you know, and the work with, you know, that Joe does with epigenetics mm. um, and explaining the changes in our body, the change, changes in our mind, the rewiring yeah. uh, that we go through. Um, yeah, yeah that, um, that's all backed up by science. Mm. Um, and when we look at a lot of the, um, uh, I guess from a coaching perspective, particularly teams, a lot of the team workshop stuff that we do is backed up by science mm. um, and yeah, it makes sense around why people do it. And yeah. Um, yeah, a lovely one that we use in, use in um, the team workshops is there's been some studies that well, there was a study done around um, basketball players and so they actually had um, two teams of, of basketball players and they um, were trying to improve their shooting. And so they did an experiment where um, one group went out and just shot goals you know, um, each day and practiced shooting each day. Um, the other team actually meditated on shooting that perfect shot. Like a visualisation. Visualisation yeah. of shooting that shot every day. Um, and the results were basically um, very, very similar in regards to the end outcome. So both groups actually improved their goal shooting by a fair bit. Mm. Um, but between the two groups, the very, very similar outcome. Mm. Um, and one didn't even practice. One didn't physically go out and do anything. It was the... But in the mind, it's the power of the In mind. the mind, the power of being able to uh, manifest that, I guess you can call it. Yeah. Um, but being really clear around what you want to do. Mm. Being able to be um, conscious Mm. around what you're trying to achieve mm. um, and you're practicing mm. um, regardless of whether you feel you're practicing or not um, 
our body listens to our body. Mm. And so when we're visualising that, when we're playing that through, um, it, it has a massive impact. Mm. Um, and I talk some, um, you know, now from a coaching perspective, I do some stuff with some elite athletes. Yeah. Um, and they will visualise yeah. each part of their race or each part of the things that they're doing. Mm. They visualise it. Yeah. Um, and in the spiritual community, that is that is manifesting. It's manifesting. <laughs> and then they get out and they get the results. They improve their performance. That's right. And they create shifts in layers of who they are to be able to get to that point. That's right. Through that process. Yeah. And so call it mm. whatever you want to... Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't doesn't matter, but certainly there's mm. a um, you know a level of how we perform to how we open up to energy, to how we open up to consciousness. Whether that's in sport, whether that's in business, mm. whether that's in our life. Yeah. Uh, when we start to find our own blocks, mm. when we start to get really clear around our values and beliefs. Yeah. When we start to get really clear around those things that we want. Yeah. Who we want to be. Um, you get really clear around the things that you need to do. And mm. when you can get clear around that, you visualize it, you manifest it. Yeah. yeah. So on that topic, what are some of the changes that you've experienced in your life, your lifestyle, you know, since relationships, that kind of yeah. thing? Have you noticed a change? Yeah, well, I was, I was away a lot. Mm. Um, traveling. Traveling in, in my old role. Yeah. And um, so now I'm home a lot. Yeah. Um, my work hours, you know, people might laugh at this, but um, you know, I start work when the kids go to school. Yeah. So nine o'clock is, is when I start taking clients and three o'clock I pick the kids up from school. Yeah. And so for the majority of my day, or majority of my days, I see clients in those times. Now yeah. there's the odd um, time where that may change, but it really is the odd time. Mm. Um, so does that mean then spending more time with the kids? Absolutely. It means yeah. that I can go and, be assistant coach with the footy. It means yeah. that I can, um, you know, go and spend time. At, at my, both my daughters play basketball, mm. and go and spend time at basketball or netball, or you know, my son with the footy. Mm. Um, it means that I can actually do family things. Yeah. Um, can actually spend a bit of time with my wife. Mm. Um, you know, it's it's um, a very different lifestyle mm. for me now than than what it was before, and certainly I'm a lot healthier. Yeah, for it. Um, so you're in the gym? Yeah, I, I go to the gym. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it was um, something that never entered my mind yeah. before. Um, but, you know, I'll live a lot longer, hopefully. Well, at least from a health perspective, I'll give myself more physically, of a chance. Yeah. Physically. Um, and stress? Stress levels are different? Well, you know, it's, there's certainly a proven link there between exercise and, and yeah. stress levels. And just um, like the, the lifestyle you had of, the the corporate world compared to now the whole lot yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um, you know I'll only take work now that that aligns with my values yeah yeah and so and there's been the beauty of it yeah, there's been corporate jobs that we've said no to yeah uh, just because I know that it's ticking a box mm. to say we've done that workshop or we've helped that team with some wellness stuff um, if if I get that feel when we're doing a bit of introductory stuff, I will say no to that work. Yeah. Um, because for me, when you start someone on their journey, when you start to open themselves up to the authentic leadership journey to themselves, understanding themselves more, unless you're prepared to really follow that up mm. and support them with their journey, um, then it can do a lot of damage. Mm. Um, so it can do such good when people open up and understand themselves and really drive forward on that journey it, it, you know from a team perspective team results harmony within the team the relationships everything yeah. gets better but if you're not prepared to back that and just open it a little bit and then close it off to me it does damage and so um, you know being able to just say no um, to the things that I don't feel aligned yeah now um, yeah. it's so much different to the stress level yeah, yeah. and there's that element too yep Mm. that's it all feeds in yeah and so I know we've talked a lot about what you do but is there anything that we've missed that you're passionate about what you do in your work the type of people you work with or what you offer to people and businesses yeah um, the 
I guess from a, from a business perspective, um, really, really passionate. We, we've got a little bit of a saying in Minds on Purpose, be the ripple, create the wave. Yeah. Um, and so that is about every individual that starts to make some change for themselves, mm. they become a little ripple for others. Yeah. Because um, you know, they go, wow, they're doing that. How do you, how do, you do that? Now, Michael, your journey, yeah? yeah? How do you do what you do? Like, how did you... And, and um, people are inquisitive mm. and they start that ripple. Mm. And then there's the next ripple, there's the next ripple. And so for me, it's that um, be the ripple, create the wave. Mm. So if you are that that person creating some change for yourself, you are the ripple. Mm. And you know, enough of those ripples, you'll create a wave. And so uh, that's a little bit of our mantra in our business is be the ripple, create the wave. And yeah. um, from a business perspective... Um, certainly the, the workshops we do, there's authentic leadership workshops with teams, which is about really helping people understand themselves more, yeah. become better authentic leaders mm. for themselves and for their businesses. Um, we do um, vision and values workshops as well. Mm. So that's to help teams get really, really clear around what they exist for. Yeah. Or even businesses get really, really clear around what they exist for. Yeah. Um, who they're there to serve, mm. what they're there to do. Um, and it's amazing when you have a really clear vision and you link that to some values mm. in terms of how you want to go about creating that vision. And then you go back a step and go, well, what are the things that we need to do um, on a daily, weekly, monthly, whatever basis in order to create that vision in line with those values? Mm. It's amazing how quickly businesses turn or how quickly teams can turn um, to improve mm. when they're clear around those things. And so we run those vision and values workshops within within teams and within businesses yeah. as well. Um, for me, they're, they're the things that I'm really passionate about. Yeah. People know why they do what they do. Or um, uh, you know, an example of that is if a business is really, really clear around what they exist for, they're really clear around their values, they're really clear around their vision, it really gives the employee the opportunity to go, I want to work for that business and that's why. Because mm. my values align. I'm passionate about creating that. Mm. Um, and for me, if you can do that as a business, you get better employees. Because mm. you get employees that are more aligned to the work that you do because you can articulate that. It means as a team, you'll get better performance out of your team because people understand what they're working for and why they're working mm. um, and you know, so many, you know, so many of the surveys that are coming out around the world at the moment. Um, you know, uh, I saw one the other day. Thirty percent um, of people in business now trust senior leadership, mm. all time low. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, low, isn't it? so there's so many things that are now starting to change that that link mm. between. Uh, and, and there was a, another stat: sixty six percent of C-suite executives, so those uh, people who basically run the companies, 66% of them, or only 66% of them, feel purpose at work. Mm. So that means there's a third of people that run large businesses that actually don't feel connected to purpose. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's no wonder there's such a disconnect now from an employee perspective. Yeah. Because not even the leaders understand why they go to work or the purpose yeah. that they feel at work. And mm. so for me, um, that's why I'm passionate about it because if businesses can be really clear and articulate their purpose and be genuine about it mm. and genuine about the values, if people can understand what drives them, their own values and beliefs and what their purpose is and where they're heading to, mm. they just marry up um, and yeah, everything could perform so much better. People could be so much happier. Stress levels when you're working in, in line with your values and you're working in line with your purpose, yeah. stress levels come right down. Mm. Um, so they're the reasons that I'm passionate yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, totally. And you're still offering Spiral for clients as well? Definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, for, for me, Spiral is the, is the real game changer. Yeah. yeah. When people go on that really, deep, it's a 10 week transformation. It's the deep dive. It's the deep dive. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, that's, that's hand in hand. I'm, I'm actually putting some, um, some business leaders from different businesses that I'm working with through that because they want to go on the journey, not because the business wants them to, Yeah, uh, which is really important that people have got to be ready for the journey themselves. Yeah. Um, 
because you're bringing up things from the subconscious. That's right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm really you know, for me that's the game changer. And people, mm. when they go back to to work, they are better leaders. Mm. For it. They're yeah. better at home. They're better relationships. Yeah. Um, clearer in, in what they're trying to achieve, so they can can achieve more. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's spiral spiral for me. Definitely um, is, uh, is 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 huge, um, but yeah, authentic leadership workshops and values and vision workshops. There, you know, we do other things as well. Do some strategy work and, and stuff as well. But for me, yeah, they're the big game changes that that we can help people become ripples that yeah. create that wave. Hundred percent. Well, yeah, I feel like this has been a fantastic conversation. There's so much quality in there. Um, is there anything else you want to add? Or any final advice you'd give someone just on their journey to their authentic self with energy work? Yeah. Um, for me, listen to your body. Mm, huge. So if I had have listened to my body sooner, um, I would have opened up my eyes to some of the things I needed to see and mm. change mm. sooner. Because um, when you're out of alignment energetically shows up that's right in the body eventually eventually and so and that might be sickness yeah so whether it's illness or whether it's an ache or a pain or whatever but yeah but listen to your body um mm. so for me that's that's a big one um don't just keep putting it off yeah oh that's just that or that's just that yeah but listen listen to your body this is your life live it once live it like. once yeah live it live it well here you know? yeah and it's um mm. uh, you're in this body once mm. um so listen listen to it so that's that's a big one, and um, and you know if you have question marks um, around, you know, particularly if you're asking yourself, are you happy in five years' time doing what I'm doing right now? If there's question marks around that, well, then start your journey. Um, if you know a lot of people will go, oh, I could probably do this for another few years. Mm. You know, ask yourself, do you want to be doing this for another few years? Mm. Um, you know, why haven't you started your journey yet? around what you actually want mm. um, and if you're sitting there going but I don't need the change but oh, probably more again <laughs> start your journey um, understand why and, and what else there is yeah for you yeah. I mean it's the best investment you can make in of your time and energy get connecting with yourself what That's you really right. want out of life yeah when you align like you said with your vision and your values then everything else in your life comes into alignment. It does. There might be some big changes to make, but it's all for the better. Yeah, that's mm. it. And not all of them are going to be fun. Yeah. As as we yeah. as we know. But um, being out of alignment, it's not much it's fun not either. It's not fun either. Even if you're not facing the music. That's right. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so if anyone wants to connect with you or reach out, what's the best way that they can Yeah. Do that? Um, uh, Minds on Purpose, so www.mindsonpurpose.com.au. Yep. Uh, website has most of our details on there. Uh, you can book an exploratory call yep. uh, with Anita or myself on that one as well. Um, so, yeah, you can contact, you know, reach out to the team on there. Um, socials. Yep. So, uh, Facebook, Minds on Purpose on Facebook or on Instagram. Yeah. As well. So, uh, fantastic. Yeah. Reach out and, and uh, have a chat. Yeah, well, thanks once again for just sharing your journey, your wisdom and knowledge. Um, yeah, you've offered so much, so thanks for being here. No, thank you very much for, for having me. I feel we've rambled a fair bit, but uh, you know, when, you, when we're just in these conversations, it's, uh, it always takes a lot of turns, Yeah, I guess. But um, no, great, um, great what you're doing in terms of your consciousness journey mm. um, and sharing that with others. So... Um, really grateful to be able to have come on this podcast yeah. and share my story yeah absolutely and look forward to what the future holds for both of us and for all the listeners of course and you know there's no accidents in energy if someone's listening to this it was for a reason yep. and so if you have any questions or anything reach out but otherwise until next time um, have a fantastic day and we'll, we'll see you then Done. thanks Mike see you, see you. Oh